How's it going everybody? It is Ben Aqua and in this video I'm going to be comparing Ableton Live and the processor power between three different machines from the MacBook Air M1 16 gigabytes, the MacBook Pro 14 inch base model right here and then on the right is going to be the MacBook Pro 14 inch 10 core CPU 16 core GPU kind of beefed up model. And be sure to smash the like button and subscribe below if you're not already because I'm going to be doing a lot more content about this 14 inch MacBook Pro. So what I have going on here today is a song that I recently released. It's called Sequenced Dream, and I have the same exact project file going on all three of these machines. And if you want to check out my music, search for Ben Aqua on Apple Music and Spotify. So overall in this project, there are 22 channels. So we have MIDI drums and we have a bunch of VSTs and a ton of effects. We have some live vocals that I recorded. We also have an entire grouping, like a side chain of a bunch of different synthesizers, and there's even a map master going on, which is Ozone 9. So on all three machines, to make it fair, I set the sample rate to the same 48,000 in and out sample rate. Then I set the buffer size to 256 samples. So as you can see here in the MacBook Air, we have an average of about 30 to 35 five CPU going on here, which is really amazing considering there's that many channels going on at the same time. The MacBook Air has been absolutely stunning for music production. But if we look over here at the base model MacBook Pro, we're getting an even better average CPU usage of about 30, 31, 32. And I wouldn't say that's astronomically better than the MacBook Air M1, which was getting about 31 to 35% overall CPU usage average. And now let's see how the 14 inch 10 core model is doing when it comes to the average CPU usage. It is going up to about 30, 31, 32 but it actually dips below 30. So in recent reports, this model, the 10 core model, was said to deliver about 20% more CPU power than this model, the base model 14 inch. But is it doing astronomically better? Like is it worth spending $2,500 on this machine to get that much better performance? And like I said, this MacBook Air is really not that far behind, especially when you consider that the MacBook Air M1 is about half the price. It's absolutely blazing fast. I don't really have almost any complaints about the MacBook Air versus the MacBook Pro. The only main difference I would say is the display and better CPU and GPU performance on the 14 inch MacBook Pro. So now for the moment of truth, let's export the same project file on all three machines at a sample rate 48,000 hertz, wave file 24 bit, no dither, same settings. I'm really curious if the 10 core is just gonna blaze through this, crossing my fingers. Okay, three, two, one, press. All right, and we're off to the races and we're already up to 29% done after 20 seconds. Yeah, so we're definitely a lot faster on the 10 core here and back to the M1 over here, we're still at 47%, 56%. It's like watching a damn sports game right here, 69%, yeah. So the 10 core is definitely gonna win. All three of them are super fast. You know, this song is about three minutes, 45 seconds, but as you can see, 10 core is about to be done in about a minute and five seconds, and then the base model is about to be done a minute and 12 seconds and then the m1 air still going here after a minute and 15 seconds but we're almost done it's not super far behind and we're there so a minute and 22 seconds on the m1 air and a lot faster actually on the 10 core and the 8 core m1 pro models so there you have it wow the 10 core is actually a lot faster when it comes to export so after all of those shenanigans, what are my thoughts on the M1 Air versus the new 10 core and eight core base model MacBook Pro? First of all, the MacBook Air M1 is by no means slow because the CPU performance is right behind the 14 inch MacBook Pros and the export time, you know, was like what, 15 seconds more than the M1 Pro, but still it wasn't bad at all. It's definitely not that slow. In fact, this model, the M1 MacBook Air is probably the laptop that I would still recommend to most 
most people, especially if you're more budget conscious. You can get this model even with 16 gigabytes refurbished for like $1,200 or something, where the M1 MacBook Pro 14 inch starts at $1,999. And then this model right here with 10 core and then 16 core, this one is $2,499. So even the base model MacBook Pro 14 inch is almost twice as much as the MacBook Air M1. But what you're getting for that extra money, you're getting a faster processor, you're getting this kind of beefy, chunky design. The thickness and the extra weight on the MacBook Pro is also something to consider. I believe this MacBook Pro is about a pound heavier. You can see just how much thinner the MacBook Air is compared to the MacBook Pro. But the MacBook Pro feels a lot more beefy. It feels a lot more robust. I personally love this 14 inch display. And as you can see, there's a lot more screen real estate on this 14 inch MacBook Pro in Ableton Live. Like I can see a lot more of my tracks. I can kind of spread out a little more with my effects down here. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to consider is port selection because the MacBook Air only has two USB-C Thunderbolt ports and then a headphone jack on the other side where this new MacBook Pro is amazing if you don't like dongle life. Like there's a MagSafe charger, three Thunderbolt ports. There's two over here, one on the other side. And then there's also an updated headphone jack, which sounds incredible. The other side of the MacBook Pro has this SD card reader, which I'm obsessed with. There's also an HDMI adapter. You can plug this into a TV or a huge monitor. And then here's your third Thunderbolt 4 port, especially if you have you know your audio interface, headphones, MIDI controllers, or just a lot of peripherals that you're plugging into your device. I think you're really going to appreciate all these extra ports and stuff on the MacBook Pro. And some of you may be wondering, should you get the 10 core model or the eight core model? Again, I think it comes down to budget. If you have a higher budget, I would definitely go for the beefed up 10 core model. It's honestly not insanely different though from the base model. Like you are getting better CPU performance. You're going to be getting a faster export speed on the 10 core for sure. So if you have like really demanding clients or something that need files immediately, I would definitely get the beefed up model of the MacBook Pro. But if you're on a smaller budget, this base model is absolutely insane. And a lot of the features like the screen, keyboard, trackpad, etc. This base model is almost exactly the same as the 10 core. But when you're doing normal stuff, just like checking your email in Safari and using social media and stuff, these machines are basically identical. Like you won't really notice a huge kind of day to day difference. And since you made it to the end of the video, I have a discord channel called the House of Aqua and I would love it if you joined. The link to that is in the description below. That's it for this video. I hope it was helpful for you. Leave your questions and comments below and I will see you in the next video.